We are resuming our Wraith 1.9 build. I'm in the middle of putting the front axles on and we are getting so close. So let's get to it. Get ourselves a little lock tight. Six, seven, and eight. Looks like they gave us an extra. I'm really counting for my own counting abilities here. The count. Ah, ah, ah. All right, we've got a left and a right. It looks like. And does that align? It looks like that aligns. Uh, that's a big, that's a big gap there. I wonder if we have options for high steer and low steer, if that's really what this is about. I should probably read more directions is what it is. That's, uh, cause that's, that you can see there, that's a huge amount. That's not just double shear. That's a, that's a lot of clearance. Although I wonder left and right, it may be different left and right. So let's look at the other side. Nope, huge clearance. And I do wonder, yeah, they don't show you there, but it could be, yeah, we've got this spacer here. That's probably what the spacer is for. So we would do double shear on one side, steering to the other, spacer. Yeah, that's, that's it, that's it. Cool, all right, we got two coming over to that side. So what we should be able to do Making sure that, yeah, there we go. So we're gonna stack the steering with, uh, you know, our servo connector with our, our steering, whatever it's called, connecting rod. It's a, it's, it's a gas engine, it's got a connecting rod. Then, uh, there we go, this goes through that. And then it'll go through this. And then, oh, no, nope, wrong one. Make sure it's the right one. And then it'll go through that, making sure we have everything aligned properly. Now, should be able to just kind of bring it all together. Come on, people, now. Smile on your brother. Everybody bolt together. Try to love one another right now. Cool. Yeah, that's neat. I like that. We'll do the same for the other side. It's already got a little bit of Loctite. That's the wrong screw. This one is the right one. Uh-huh. And then spacer. And then steering connector part thingy. I should know the name of these links by now. I've been doing this long enough. But that's okay. It's kind of hard to keep everything in my mind all at once forever. I don't know about you, but my memory isn't perfect. There we go. That's nice. That's real nice. Cool. Now we just need to bolt these guys in and it has the tiniest, teeny tiny little screw. Oh yeah, 1.5 millimeter. Now, should we do it, you know, crossways, like bolt one, bolt three, bolt two, bolt four? Maybe. All right, I'm gonna loosen this a little bit. Loosen the steering screw just a little bit, and that'll allow us to bolt these steering arms down a little further and then go back. Usually when you're bolting something together that has a whole bunch of screws involved, you don't want to tighten everything down all at once. You kind of want to go around get everything really close and then ease everything in. And it looks like, oh, I see the extra screws because we have five of them in this one side. That's interesting. Wonder what that's for. Of screws in these metal axles. Man, we're getting 
close. We're going to be able to put shocks on here soon. There we go. And now for this side. Uh, and the same thing, I need to loosen this just a smidge. And I do wonder if that is because these ball ends are just slightly shorter than whatever the axial ball ends would come with. And again, I can just go through and replace those at a later date. You know, the Traxxas balls are just a little narrower than the axial ones because you know how companies are. They all have to have their own standard. Why? Because they want to. That's really about it. All right, we gotta loosen this just a little more. Ooh, a little thunder outside. Boy, we've been needing the rain. How's it doing in your neck of the woods? You getting enough rain or are y'all also in deficit mode like Missouri? I hear Colorado's have a <laughs> having a heck of a year for rain and also record snow, which is gonna help fill up the reservoirs so that you know, climate activists can say you need to drain those reservoirs for some reason. You know, bring it back to bring it back to how nature intended with no humans. All right, we have a little bit of space here. Now, let's go bend that arm if I tighten it down too much. So, I'm just gonna have to remember to go back for these these balls. I have to go back and change some balls. Cool. All right, there we go. That's that's a good part right there. The next thing we're gonna we're gonna screw some shocks in, and I'm betting it's the only two screws left. What do you think? I know what I think. I think I should have put the shocks on the axles before I bolted the axles into the rig. That's what I think. So, uh, yeah, well, that's the right size. Oh yeah, this is gonna be tricky. This will be tricky. Maybe I'll just unbolt it. Come on, people now. I'll go have that stuck in my head. <laughs> Smile on your brother, everybody get together. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I didn't get to enjoy that 70s and 60s love music. That, that really wasn't my generation. I'm, I'm sure there's some of y'all out there watching this that were a part of that generation. But it's my parents. That's that's them. Although I did get to listen to a lot of Allman Brothers growing up, but me being a kid, listening to eight tracks with Allman Brothers, I would put them on fast speed and then pretend that I was listening to the Chipmunks. <laughs> yeah, no, you know how kids are. Making making dads angry that you're wearing out their their eight tracks because you know well now they're probably worth some money but back then they definitely weren't one of those things where you have a yard sale and people are like I'll give you a dollar for everything because I'm not paying a dollar for <laughs> eight tracks all right oh well it'd help if I use the right one we're just going to unscrew this other shock. I do think that worked out much better. Oh no, my spacer. Oh yeah, we got some good thunder out there. Some rolling thunder. It reminds me of a country song and I don't even know which one it is, but Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks. Oh yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, 
Thunder Rose, and a Thunder Rose. As you can tell, I missed my calling as a country singer. <laughs> All right, can I? Where's the? Oh, okay. Oh, these little teeny baby hands come in handy sometimes. It seems like the average crawler does not have teeny baby hands, like like bear paws. When I go to crawling comps and I give everybody handshakes, it's like a bear bear hand fest. You let me know in the comments. Do you have large hands? <laughs> is working on crawlers just an exercise in patience or you got little baby hands like me to where you can fit them in there no problems usually all right we're gonna have to we need these pliers these teeny little pliers that fit in my teeny little baby hands does it fit it doesn't fit that way You know, one thing I'd like to do when we set up the new space is to have a really nice, tight close-up shot for this sort of thing. And I don't know if it's going to be like wearing something on my head or what, but it'd be nice to get some a little bit easier, tight shots for y'all. That'd be cool. Maybe change position of cameras. All right, I lost my spacer again. There it is. Oh man, we're getting close. Look at this. It's gonna, it's gonna almost sit like a rig. I could even throw some wheels on there real quick. Yes. I'm like, why is it, why is it going back and forth? Oh man, my pan hard, my pan hard won't get around my shocks. I installed the shocks. Oh, it's so close. We'll have to take the shock off. Now it seems that I am missing one screw. One screw from a pan hard. It must have been one that I stole for the shocks. Now, boy, that's a tight fit. I might have to take off things. It's, it's usually like this where you gotta take things apart and put them back together. Hey, there's a screw I thought I lost. Found it, didn't lose it. A lot of times you got to take stuff apart, put it back together, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just because there's a certain way that it has to be assembled. Uh, there we go. And you can't get to it otherwise, but it looks like I'm just going to barely be able to pass this through. Yeah, yeah. Come on now, get in there. Get in the hole. If I compress this, will it work? Nope. Oh, it's so close. I don't want to take this apart again, and I don't want to cross thread it either. What I need is a driver that has a ball end on it, which I don't have any here. I can start this by hand though. You know, baby fingers. Little bitty baby hands. There we go. That's probably close enough to force it. Uh, no, it really doesn't want that. It really doesn't want that. I'm gonna do it anyway. Good enough, it's got Loctite, it's gonna stay. There we go. Oh, those shocks feel like butter. All right, uh, full compression. We are hitting the pan hard on the actual housing itself, but that's a lot of travel up and down before we get there. And with uh, 
our articulation. On one side, we hit it almost full bump on this shock. And more than likely, our wheels are going to be tucking in and, and hitting too. And then on this side, it's absolutely clear. Um, steering, it looks like we're hitting boop our uh, pan hard mount up here. We're still at 45 degrees though, so that's probably not a big deal. Let's talk out a stock uh, servo on here. And yeah, a little bit more than 45 degrees that way. So we're looking pretty good. Um, we can always do a little bit of clearancing. I'm sure I'm going to end up needing. I'm going to end up breaking that that stock pan hard mount off. Is it removable? Uh, yeah, it is removable, so I can get another one. But of course, the plastic frame is going to be our next weak point. This is the issue. You break something, you upgrade it, and now you have another weak link somewhere else. All right. Cool. Well, I suppose we're so close, I may as well just throw on some hexes and wheels. Why not? Don't forget the outer bearings that we didn't put in last time because we didn't want to lose them. There we go. Boop. And which dirty wheels are we looking for? We're looking for these dirty wheels. Ooh. All sorts of parts. Wait, where's our Oh, we got a... Where's our hexes? Where's our hexes, man? I must have lost them. Took them apart. Put them somewhere. We need our hub. Oh, here's our hubs. Here's our hubs. All right, all right. What if I don't want to use those? Maybe I don't want to use those wheels anymore because I got a fancy new set of wheels. Yeah, I guess that'll be for another day. I would like to use something a little newer on this than the i mean those xds aren't bad so i still got to put them back together all right i think we're at a good stopping point so there we go i'm gonna call it there and we will continue on Ooh, uh, let me let me just put the hexes on so i don't lose parts how about that we will almost be done these have set screws in them they will hold in our bearings they will hold in our pins they will hold in our sanity Yes, oh, I'm getting excited for this. I haven't driven this rig in so long. Oh, that sounds great. Got these set of TGH wheels with uh, high racks in them too, so. Just for looks, just for the moment. They would need more offset. Or, uh, you know, they need to go out a little bit as rubbing on stuff. But, hey, there we go. A rig. It sits. Awesome. Well, just a few more steps and we'll be done. As you can see, it takes a really long time to wrench on rig sometimes, especially when you need to exchange really large components. I'm going to put back some of the things that I stole for myself into my travel bag so that I don't lose them next time that I need to go out. We got our uh, three millimeter back in there. There we go. All right. One more down and I think one more video to go and we should be good. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.